Hey, what's up, everybody? All you fellow head heads out there. What's up? How's welcome going? to Fake Plastic Tree Fingers. Yep, welcome. Uh, yeah, well, uh, today we're uh, discussing the second radio at album, The Bends. The Bends. The Bends, yes. This is where Radiohead becomes Radiohead, right? Yep. The it, Radiohead we all know and love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, so just the facts. Let's talk about the facts of this record. Okay. Yeah. So something uh, a little interesting. Uh, oh, you're gonna just lay them out. Yeah. Lay well, some facts out. So uh, yeah. before the song came out, the My Iron Lung EP uh, came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the first time that um Radiohead worked with Nigel Godrich, right? Yeah. And Stanley Donwood. Um, which they would all, but they would go to work on the uh all the radiohead albums after this correct yes so that's a you know great um you know great catch there so we so we're we're covering in this first season of fake plastic tree fingers we're covering the albums right so Mm -hmm. the 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 lps as you will the long players right um we are going to cover those records and then season two we're going to go back and look at like the all the eps and the b-sides and the rarities and you know uh, from each era of each record. So yeah, that's one of the great things about Radiohead is there's so mm-hmm. many good songs that aren't on their main main albums oh, yeah. too, yeah. right? So yeah. we're definitely going to make sure we talk about those. Um, but yeah, I, you know, and I hadn't even thought of that, but yes, they had actually worked with Nigel and, uh, and, and what, did Stanley do the artwork for? Yeah, I guess he did. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he did. Uh, marked Radiohead's first collaboration with cover artist Stanley Donwood. So... Yeah, so this is you know this is really that great leap forward for Radiohead. Mm-hmm. Um, the Meyer and Lung was you know a good start on that, and it's a really interesting record when we come back when we come back to that later. Um, but uh, but yeah, good good point there. Um, so Nigel worked on this. Obviously, uh, it's the first album full first full length album that he has uh, credit for. Yeah, make sure that's not there uh, in your face. Okay. All right, still hear you. There we go. All right, so. Yeah, we got we got Nigel, um, and then one interesting guy that they never worked with after this, uh, but is very notable in my opinion is John Lecky, um, and he was the you know he was really the the main producer of this record. Um, so John Lecky has produced some other really great records, and uh, one of which is a huge huge favorite of mine, and that's the Stone Roses. Uh, first album their debut pretty great album right uh, there. absolutely great album so uh, john lucky had worked on that back in 1989 he worked on the verbs a storm in heaven which is also a really good record um and uh you're a fan of muse right yeah so he, origin of symmetry is yeah. a pretty uh pretty good album and i i can definitely see uh the the similarities between the bends and uh origin of symmetry which you both produced um yeah, they're definitely big step ups from the debut. Yeah, so you know they're starting to get into this, you know, a little bit of a, you know, really kind of pedigree, you know, here with uh, working with John Lucky, right? This is a, this is this is a significant step, I think, in my opinion. Um, and uh, just a couple of notable notable other things he worked, um, you know, in lesser roles, not quite production roles, but he worked in lesser roles on uh, records by George Harrison, John Lennon. Um, Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd as well. So, um, and Paul McCartney. So he basically worked with all the Beatles and, um, and then worked with Pink Floyd. So, you know, pretty, you know, the guy had a, had a good track record. He'd, he'd, he'd worked on some pretty, pretty incredible stuff before this. Um, so, and um, I just think that's cool. I think that's cool to call yeah. that out. Um, and it, it's interesting to think about like maybe what, uh, what effect that had on them you know, if any, they could look back and be like, well, the only really big thing was that it introduced us to Nigel. And that was the thing that really mattered for us going down the road. Because I feel like this record is not viewed by Radiohead still. Like, I feel like they look at it back at it now and it's still maybe, I think they like, I think they like a lot of the songs on it because they still play quite a few in concert, but Mm -hmm. maybe they've just gotten pretty far beyond it at this point. Yeah. And that's understandable. I mean, you know, uh, especially after like, um, what is it? Uh, a, a long time after the album came out, you know, it can get, you know, it, especially since they've changed their sounds so much since mm-hmm. then. Like if you compare this to like a moon shape pool or something, 
Um, it's just such a different sound and it can feel kind of, kind of awkward to, uh, you know, go back and, uh, play a bunch of stuff from this, you know, from this album. So I, I think they definitely appreciate it. Um, and the way that it was, you know, it really changed them and it, it made them who they are, um, yeah. but it's not, uh, you know, I, I don't think they, they love it as much as a lot of other albums that they made. Yeah. It's a, um, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, one of the things we talked about with Pablo Honey was that it feels very much like it was, they, that they, um, they emerged with their debut, not fully formed yet. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Benz, if, if this could be, if we could just pretend like Pablo Honey never happened, this would be like one of the great debuts of all time, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it really feels more appropriate as a, as a debut for them. Right. Yeah. And I feel like they were coming more into their own. They were starting to identify really what their, what their true identity was instead of just what the record label wanted them to be. Um, but even then, you know, it's like for them, it's probably still this record where they recorded in a studio is probably still a good bit of oversight by this, you know, by the label. And, um, and it wasn't really until okay computer that they'd, be like we're just going to re go record in a mansion somewhere and do our own thing and you you either like it or you don't mm -hmm. um you know they hadn't quite gotten there yet so um anyway it came out in uh march of 1995 8th of march 1995 and uh was recorded in from february through november of 1994 at uh, rak in london the manor in oxfordshire and abbey, abbey. road in london yeah so it's pretty cool yeah, yeah yeah good stuff um all right so what are you like so do you want me to go first on my personal yeah. i guess i should go first since i you know I, since i have the memories that go back the furthest mm -hmm. so um here's the thing this was the record that I, I told you guys on the on the pablo honey episode i heard creep i liked it and after a few months of it just being played non-stop on mtv and on the radio it annoyed the crap out of me and i was just like i'm I never want to hear anything from this band again. And maybe a year, a year and a half later, um, I th think I was watching. I think I, had, I think I saw the video for fake plastic trees on um, MTV around like 95 sometime in 95. And I was like, Hmm, this is actually kind of a nice song. But I didn't pay much more attention to it. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is that band Radiohead with Creep. Yeah, like it's, you know, I was into other stuff at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I remember watching the movie Clueless and hearing some songs in the background and being like, is that Radiohead? That sounds like that band Radiohead. And I was like, this is a pretty good song, too. And and then my buddy, Tim. Uh, Tim. I've told you a little bit about Tim mm -hmm. yeah. Brannick. Tim uh, introduced me like he was always one step ahead of me when it came to music. And he was always like, hey, have you heard this? Like something I'd never heard of. And I'd be like, no, I haven't heard that. He'd be like, you should listen to it. And then I wouldn't go and listen to it. And I'd be like, this is awesome. This is the greatest thing. And I want to listen to not like he introduced me to so many bands that I'm a huge fan of now. And um, uh, and I remember seeing so, so I had like huge respect for like whatever his tastes were in music. And I remember seeing this CD lying around his room uh, when I was over at his place one day. And, and I'm like, really like Radiohead? Like you're, you're into radio. This is that creep band, right? Like you're into Radiohead. And, and he had like, not only this, but he had like a bunch of the singles from this album too. Like, um, you know, uh, the, you know, the high and dry single and the fake plastic tree single and the just single and he had all these things, which had all these other B-sides on them. And I was kind of like, I remember hearing, he didn't actually like hand this one to me and be like, you should listen to this. But I think we'd like, you know, I'd, we'd go go somewhere and we'd play music, whatever. And he'd pop in, you know, something by radio, something off of this, or maybe the Benz or one of the singles or something like that. And I'd just be like, this is really good. This rocks, right? And, um, and, and just slowly I realized like, I need to get this record. This is really good. And I went, got the bends and I, you know, I think I still have, I think I got a used copy um, and still have that same used copy of it. And I was just like this, I just listened, listened to it nonstop, listened to the B-sides. Um, can't wait to talk about the B-sides from this year because they're so good. Makila Dora, 
Um, how can you be sure? Uh, India rubber. How can you be sure? Um, and, and there's others as well. Like, but I just, I like the Kiladora is one of those. You're just like, this is a B side. This is a crazy good B side. Um, but such a good record. I was just like, Whoa, like every song on this, on this album is fantastic. Um, it was amazing. Like, because I just remember like writing them off after creep, like total one hit wonder. No one will ever care about them again. And it was such a good album. And that was this really the start of my lifelong love of Radiohead. So yeah, yeah. Brandon, what so, about you? Uh, this one's kind of funny in a way. Um, you know, uh, it's, I, I, I remember I, I saw it like when I was younger, just like, uh, I'm pretty sure you had, you had the CD out somewhere. Yeah. And so I saw that album cover and I was like, that is such a weird album cover. And it kind of freaked me out. I don't know why, <laughs> but um, like, and I was like, I was like, yeah, that's probably just like one of those weird bands that, you know, that he likes. And then, um, and a couple of years later when I got into Radiohead, I mean, I fell in love with this album and uh, it was, it was my favorite album for a long time. Um, and I mean, it was, it's a, you know, uh, I, I, I've always, you know, from the first time I heard it, I've uh, loved this album. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's the experience of a lot of people. Um, you know, again, it's one of those you think, what if this had been their debut? Right. Yeah. And, and it maybe it wouldn't be that different of a history because they, they still, they, you know, they put out Pablo honey and still became Radiohead, one of the biggest, greatest bands of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, it's just, it's interesting to think like, cause they don't, they have pa Pablo honey. It's just kind of like that record we like to pretend didn't happen. Um, yeah. so anyway, well, let's talk about the tracks. All right. Let's talk about the uh, individual tracks. Shall we? Right. Yeah. So the opening track, Planet Telex. Planet Telex. Uh, the thing that I always remember about this one, I read this somewhere, is that um, they wanted to call it Planet Xerox. Planet Xerox, yeah. yeah. And um, and of course, Xerox was actually a copyrighted term, so they couldn't get the they couldn't get the permission to use that term in their song. Um, of course, it would have been weird if it was like Planet Xerox with yeah. a little copyright symbol next to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, or whatever trademark, whatever. Um, but they couldn't get the permission to use that. So they ended up naming it planet telex. Um, anyway, I think this is a great opening track. It's been eclipsed since because they, they're ready. If there's two things Radiohead are really good at, it's opening tracks and closing tracks. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, planet telex to me is a great opening track, but it's just been eclipsed by other ones that have come along. But I will just say like from the gate on this record, there's just a, like there's just a feel to it. Yeah, it, I I, def I definitely understand that. Like from the moment like that that like uh you know the uh when they all come in and start playing, it just feels so much different from anything that they did uh, on Pablo Honey. You know, even on the best moments, it just seems so ahead of it already in the first couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's a spectacular opening track. Um. And I mean, obviously they, they definitely made some better ones. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a spectacular way to open up an album. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so good. I, it's just like, it, this is the thing, like, it's the thing like radio, like it, the magic is there, right? Like all, like you hear, um, you hear that opening and it's like, it's right when, um, uh, you know, cause it starts out and it has like the organ and everything with like the weird effects going on you're like well that's interesting and then it's like the, the drums come in and then it, but it's when that it's when everything drops out and you got the you got the guitar just playing by itself dun, 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 dun. like you just so so good like that's the magic right there that's yeah. the radiohead magic they found it right yeah they found the thing and um and it just continues it like carries on through the rest of the record mm -hmm. um it that's to me is the thing about great is about like the classic records they have a certain quality to them that you like, you can't put your finger on it exactly, but mm -hmm. it just, it's distinctive. It's unique and no one else can do it quite the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. I, 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 it's got this magic to it that just makes it, you know, feel so different. Um, but also feels like, you know, uh, just, so legendary at the same time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so uh great opener planet telex next up 
the Benz title track. The Benz, yeah. Uh, you go first on this one. Yeah. So for a while, um, uh, you know, I didn't really like Radiohead. Mm-hmm. Um, and the only thing by them that I liked was this particular song. Um, and it was I, I enjoyed the song a lot. And then, um, you know, I, uh, you know, and then at one point I decided, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to check out, you know, the album. And I did. And this was like my favorite song uh, for the longest time. You know, I would listen to this every day. So, I mean, it's a great song. I love it. Um, but, in you know, I've, since I've listened to it so many times, it's kind of it's kind of gotten a bit old. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's still a, a spectacular track. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so. I mean, it's. It, it, I, I don't know what else I can say on top of it, like on top of what you just said, but it's like it's a great rock song. Um, it's got. I love the way it carries forward. So the record, um, you know, it takes on this, uh, this quality where it's not just like isolated songs. It's not just a mere collection of songs, but it seems to be telling it, approaching, telling a story like that can, that connects all of them. Right. Yeah. Because planet Telex does it not, it's not very, it's not super noticeable, but it does kind of bleed into the bends and you've got that ambient, uh, whatever it is drill sergeant in the background or whatever right mm-hmm. um who's like pick it up right and then it's like yeah. just a burn and i remember i remember as a kid like whenever i'd fly um like in my teenage years i whenever i get on a plane i'd always want to like be listening to the bends as i took off right because it mm-hmm. feels like taking yeah. Yeah, like that that just feels like taking off to me mm-hmm. um so um hey by the way i forgot to say this at the beginning um if you like this so far, hit that like button. If you are uh, with us so far, drop us a comment below. Tell us what you think about the bends um, and uh, tell us your memories when you first heard it, all those kinds of things. Uh, and hey, subscribe to our channel too, please hit yes, that subscribe please. button. So I uh, really appreciate that. So, um, I mean, the bends, it's, it's just a really great song. You and I um, will sometimes jam out to it. Um, Yeah. You know, just, just kind of rock out to it on acoustic instruments. It's just a fun song to play. It's a fun song to sing along to. Uh, Just, just really cool. So, Hey, by the way, you're sitting, you're sitting back kind of far in your, uh, your your chair. You need to, you need to sit forward a little bit here. I feel like, or I got to sit back or something. There we go. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. Great track. And you know, yeah. He kind of talks about this uh, newfound fame in the song and not knowing who he can trust, and it's it's a really great song, um, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just a great track. Uh, next up, high and dry. Yeah, so high and dry. Um, you know, we talked on with Pablo Honey about how it's it's kind of a shame that they never put a, put the like softer foot mm-hmm. forward with that record because. Um, uh, thinking about you is, is, is a pretty nice song. Right. Uh, and it's one of those, you're like, if creep was a hit, they should have been able to have a hit with this too. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of song, there's actually several songs on this record in that vein. And this is the first of them. Mm -hmm. Um, high and dry, really interesting. It goes, it has a long history with Rick. It was, it was one of those songs that Tom wrote years before it made it onto, um, you know, it made it onto the bends. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing for me, it's such a great, like, I love the, the riff, the acoustic riff that he plays. Yeah. And, and I love the sound, the feel of the drums, like the drum, like, mm-hmm. like it's, it, there's something kind of, kind of um, indie or lo-fi about the feel of the drums. Yeah. I, I can definitely hear the lo-fi part. I mean, it, it just, it, and it's, uh, I feel like it just kind of, it's not very noticeable, but it just sounds so nice and it really fits the aesthetic of the song you know um you know just the it really fits the acoustic guitar Mm -hmm. yeah and um i think there's great great guitar work on here i'm pretty sure you know uh a lot of it's um so so great guitar work by by all of them but like uh but i think ed has a particularly nice guitar part here i'm pretty sure that's him playing the um kind of the in the bridge towards the end um and you know just just a really cool little change of direction for the band. And again, like three songs in 
each song feels so distinctive. Like, you know, that thing with Pablo Honey where like, mm-hmm. towards the middle, you're just like, yeah. all these songs are starting to sound the same. Yeah. Each one of these songs just sounds so different from each other. Yeah, they sound so different, but yet they work so well with each other. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a perfect way, perfect uh, three song start. Yeah, uh, just a great little, you know, a great start to the album, a great, a great way to jump into the record. Um, and then we have, uh, oh, by the way, on High and Dry, um, have you ever, have you ever seen the video for this? I have, yeah. Yeah, I think I think at some point we gotta um, we gotta go back and like maybe do special episodes on uh, on some of the music videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the great thing about Radiohead is there's so much to talk about when it comes to oh, yeah. uh, and the videos. There's a couple of classic videos, you mm-hmm. know, at least three classic videos for this uh, for this album. So uh, they're yeah. worth like just talking about uh, in depth. So um, we'll save those for another time. All right, track four. Fake plastic trees. Fake plastic trees. Yes. Yeah. Partly our namesake for this podcast, right? Yep, it is. In part. Um, so this is uh, this this is this may be the first Radiohead uh, truly like stone cold stone cold classic, right? Yeah, this is probably the first uh, song that you that I I think everyone you know uh, every radiohead fan just loves this song yeah and for good reason it's a truly you know amazing song um and so something uh interesting about it that i heard is so the original demo um sounded like uh november rain Hmm. um like a, a demo of november rain and um and so and tom wasn't really sure what he wanted to do with the song you know after that and so I think they like I, I I don't remember like they they I think they went to like a Jeff Buckley concert. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's what yeah. I remember too. And then he he knew what he wanted to do with the song, and apparently this is like the first song where he really knew what he uh, like the this is where his he his lyricism really started to get um, great, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, and and it's a great vocal performance uh, by Tom for sure, but it's also a great band performance. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I um, this is fake plastic. So so you you go back to thinking about you, it, which was the, you know the kind of the the acoustic centerpiece of Pablo Honey, right? Yeah, and um, it's kind of it's it's a nice song. It really is, but it's it's sort of. It, yeah. it's 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 sort of one dimensional or two dimensional yeah you know? it's, and it's nowhere near as good as this song is well and you think about it like it, it never really goes beyond just being that kind of like acoustic strummer yeah. right um high and dry already did to some degree but then you get this one and it's like and just the way it builds to that like when uh you, you know when he's like, the second time through he's like where's me? Where? and then he just hits that note holds it and then it's like like it's just like boom like that is such an amazing moment yeah and everything comes in and the the strings uh uh sound amazing on the song at that part um it's it's beautiful yeah um yeah there's a there's i remember there was a bootleg and this is one of those songs that just sounds great whenever they play it right Mm -hmm. um and it's and it's because it is such a uh a from the heart um but full band performance. Right. Um, I mean, just like, to me, it's that it's a beautiful song, but then when, when everything comes crashing in at that moment, it takes it. I mean, it's transcendent. Like it just takes it to this whole new level. Mm -hmm. Um, Really, really amazing. So um, I mean, maybe the, maybe the Ben's looking back itself is, is maybe the, since it precedes, this is that first uh, great moment. But uh, but fake plastic trees. I mean, it's just it's the first uh, truly amazing Radiohead. Yes, uh, it's like we, we need we need something other than just, like another level of awesomeness yeah, above it. Like yeah. the fake plastic tree, <laughs> trees yeah. belongs on. So yeah, yeah, so good, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, bones. bones. Yeah, what do you think of bones? So I mean, bones is uh, a pretty all right track. Um, you know, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not really much to it. I feel like it mm-hmm. kind of sounds like it could have been on, uh, Pablo honey, 
which isn't a terrible thing. I think it would have been a pretty good track on Poplar Honey, and it fits well here. But I mean, it's no, it it, it kind of suffers from being the song after Fake Plastic Trees, which mm-hmm. um is not uh, an easy thing to follow up. Right. Um. So, but I mean, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good rocker, you know. Yeah, honestly, Bones. If there's one song that sounds like it's kind of a leftover from Pablo Honey, it's it's Bones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's um, and it's. I think it would have been one of the best tracks on Bones if it had been on there or on Pablo Honey if it had been on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always been the one on on this record that I'm kind of like, eh, it's all right. Yeah. Um, you know, just never done a lot for me. But they did seem, you know, back. They, they did seem to keep it in their set list a lot longer. Like, I think they were actually fans of it, or maybe they just wanted some, because it's kind of a big rock song. Maybe they just wanted something that had um, more of a, uh, you know, more of a rock feel to it. So they wouldn't, you know, cause you, you want to rock out when you're live. Yeah. Um, but uh, to me, it's biggest problem is just that it doesn't have a very good chorus. You know, it's like, yeah, I feel- you've got to feel it in your bones. Like, it's just like, it, he does his best with it, but it just yeah. never like hits home. Yeah, it never, it, it's yeah, it's nowhere near as good as the choruses, any of the choruses so far. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's it's still a it's still an all right track. Um, and you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's enjoyable. It's merely all right, merely all right. It is. It is. All right. Uh, track six. Nice dream. Nice dream. I think it's kind of weird how they have the parentheses. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say, why do you think they have the parentheses around it? I have no idea. Also, I'm pretty sure it's um, it's nice dream. Is it nice dream lowercase stylized as lowercase? Uh, okay, not a, not on the Wikipedia track listing, but I feel like it was at one point. Um, I don't I, I don't remember it ever being that way. Yeah, no. it's it's one of those quirky little things though that uh, yeah they wouldn't have done on Pablo Honey, but it's just like you know a little thing like let's put parentheses around. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, it's just one one little thing that they do and it makes it a little more interesting. Like, yeah, hmm, I wonder why they did that. Um, just how do you feel about the song though? I mean, it's a spectacular song. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's on uh kind of in, in a similar way. It's it's very similar to fake plastic trees. Mm-hmm. Um, I it's you know, it starts off with just the acoustic guitar and then it and then it uh you know builds to be a little something more it never explodes in the way that fake plastic trees does but and but i mean I'm, it's fine you know it, it doesn't need to do that because we already had that big moment and it's and it's i like just being able to just you know stay on the more uh you know you know let it let it just uh just cruise yeah. yeah yeah for sure um i mean it's it's um yeah it's not quite fake plastic trees but it has a like it's a really beautiful song and i love i, I do love the acoustic like there's some really good acoustic guitar playing on this like it's just oh, some yeah. really great acoustic riffs on this yeah. album um that's that's something that it that makes it memorable i mean it's just that's that's the thing about the bends there's just so many dimensions on it you know mm-hmm. whereas pablo honey was kind of flat this record is just like lush and yeah. and just interesting and like how did they pull that sound off and there's all these things going on a nice dream. Uh, I really love the the strings, the way they use strings on this song. Um, I mean, I know they got into using strings in different ways, but they could use strings like that all day in my book. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just really, uh, really beautiful, really beautiful work. It, it for me, it takes me to a certain. It takes me to a certain place. Like their songs on this album are like they're trans they're transporting for me right you know what i mean by that like mm-hmm. they kind of take yeah. me to a, per- a certain place in my mind in my soul right yeah and um yeah i mean it def- it's and the song is like you know super dreamy you know it's and it's very and the lyrics are very odd mm-hmm. like it's uh i mean it's i don't know like it's a, a very weird track but it's um it's so amazing mm-hmm. um yeah yeah cool one yeah. all right track seven just 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 the almighty just yeah yeah um what can you say about just uh yeah it was kind of a rhetorical question but yeah. what can you say <laughs> what, what can you say about just Brandon? yeah i mean um one of the best songs i've ever written i think yeah um and um i mean 
what is there to say really that hasn't already been said? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a banger and it's just so, uh, it's just amazing. What do you, what do you think it's about? Like, what do you, like, what does this song mean to you? Cause you, you know, you like me have listened to it a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think the, I think, um, when I've, I think part of it ties into the music video, um, you know, uh, I feel like, um, just, uh, uh, (laughs) kind of put you on the spot. Hard to explain. I I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, uh, it's amazing. Um, It's just an awesome song and an accessible answer. I mean, um, yeah, I think so much of it is the, uh, is the playing like it's, you know, John, like Johnny just continues to distinguish himself as a guitar player on this record, Mm -hmm. um, which is what makes it, you know, even more hilarious that like, he just like kind of decided to abandon guitar after another record. (laughs) Um, He was like, like, but just his, his solo on this record, right. The Mm -hmm. one that just like the, it, it just hits that high note and you're just like mind blown um tom's vocal performance incredible the band just sounds tight all together um i mean it just hits on all on all frequencies mm-hmm. i guess for me the song like this title just is really interesting because it can like work on so many different levels um you know it's like just a song but it's like you know you do it to yourself it's true and that's what really hurts right like that's it's it's kind of like you you it's just that that's what happened to you right mm-hmm. you did it to yourself yeah. right yeah um so you know interesting little turn of phrase twist yeah. of phrase and and a, a cool thing about the songs that it actually originally was um I, i'm pretty sure it was like a a challenge between uh tom and johnny to see who could fit more chords into a song or something yeah um there's some kind of jazzy chords going on oh yeah in it, you know jazzy yeah. little uh chord progressions going on it's interesting oh, yeah. in that way yeah and it's i mean it's it's also kind of a multi-part song i feel like uh you know, at that uh, at that one part where it, it all kind of drops out, and it's just the drums and the guitar, mm-hmm. and then they come roaring back. I mean, it's like uh, I don't know. It's just it's spectacular. Yeah, um, I don't really know how else to say it. But. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's an awesome song. It's uh, it's like you just want to keep heaping praise upon it. Yeah, so it's just it's just spectacular. Just 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 so good. All right, yeah. uh, my Iron Lung, the lead single um yeah Yeah. i mean it's uh i've always loved the opening riff Um, yeah that riff it's very it's it's very unsettling um but it's uh it also just um feels so right i guess it has kind of a psychedelic feel to it you know it's uh yeah and have you okay so have you ever have you ever noticed how it bears it's it kind of bears a resemblance to creep yeah not not the riff that. not that yeah. guitar riff but the um but this like the structure of the song and the way it's kind of written yeah like it kind of starts off a little more common than it explodes in the chorus yeah, yeah i can see that um and i think maybe uh that that, that is interesting um they're, they're maybe they're trying to show that they can do songs better than creep um well, it's funny because the lyrics, right? This, this is our last new song, just like the last one, right? You know, yeah. you think about that lyric and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, they're kind of poking fun at themselves, right? You know, cause it yeah. sounds a little bit like Creep, which was the last song that everybody knows by them, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, but it's a, to me, it's way better than, uh, than Creep. Oh, like yeah. it's, it's, it's way above Creep. Th- that opening riff is just, it's such a great, riff it's so oh, much yeah. fun to play like as a guitar player mm-hmm. um it's just it's super memorable yeah. um it, it just has that like kind of just weird neo psychedelic feel to it but it's very pretty at the same time yeah um so just a a, a very cool song uh my iron mm-hmm. lung very cool song in my opinion yeah. yeah great track all right bulletproof i wish i was this is where they get they're getting fancy with the titles again right yeah getting getting, uh making you think with the titles what are they doing here um but yeah what do you think about bulletproof um to be honest uh i have never really loved the song that much i mean it's a good track it's pretty um but i just i always feel like i'm forgetting about it you know Mm -hmm. um and uh it's 
I mean, it's a fine song, but I just, I don't really come back to it that much. Yeah. It's um, you know, there's several, there's several quiet, you know, quote unquote, quieter songs on the record, high and dry, fake plastic trees, nice stream and bulletproof of all of them is probably the least memorable. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say, like, I still think this is a pretty darn good song. You know, it's still to me is uh, worthy of the bends and um, one that I, one that I do enjoy. It's, it's a, it's a, shorter song i feel like compared to a lot of the songs on the record mm -hmm. um but i i love the use of just like atmospherics again like a lot of the things on that make the bends great to me first of all this like all the songs really are great um mm -hmm. even the ones that aren't like incredibly great are still pretty great right yeah um but it's like the use of just like interesting just doing interesting things in the studio that give it a distinctive feel other than just like here's our 12 song collection here's a collection of our latest 12 songs right mm -hmm. It's like, no, we're trying to make a record that actually like flows together, that has a certain distinctive feel that can make you feel like you're in certain places as you listen to the songs. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's some really like interesting atmospheric stuff that happens on this one that uh, that I really enjoy. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's very atmospheric and I mean, it's it's a, it's a very well written song, but yeah, I just feel like uh, it's the one I forget about the most when it comes to the album. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, Black Star. Black Star. Um, well, um, I'd say this one's a pretty great track. Um, you know, it's um uh I, I don't I don't feel like there's anything too special about it. Um, but I mean it's it's a it's a catchy song and um you know it's uh you know i really enjoy listening to it mm -hmm. and um yeah I, it's it's actually one of my favorite tracks on the album yeah. um it's for me it's a um you know it doesn't get as much uh acknowledged as much but i think it's a really mm -hmm. uh really beautiful song um i think yeah. it's a really good performance by tom um really really great arrangement i love the um uh, uh, I, I think the chorus is great. Oh yeah. Um, the, the way the guitar, like the way they fade in the guitar and everything like that, I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, you know, I am a uh, fan of, of this one. I, I yeah. think it's and one of their better songs I mean, on I the album. I think it's, it's one of my favorites off the album. I just don't really have all that much to say about it. Um, I just feel like it's, it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Um, and then, uh, track 11 sulk sulk yeah i mean um i think this one is a pretty overlooked track off the album um and uh i think it's a, it's it's a really good song um i like i like the drums at the beginning i think mm -hmm. uh yeah that's they cool sound, they sound really cool mm -hmm. um and i love the chorus on the song um i think it's it's really catchy um <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a track that I feel like it's kind of disrespected of all the mm -hmm. tracks on the record, and I think it's much better than it normally gets credit for. Um, uh, I agree; it has a uh, the the drum the way the drums start out, uh, and again, just like it's not just the drums; it's like the what they do with like uh, like harmonics and atmosphere, like kind of the atmospheric feel of the drums too, um, and and even just the like the slow are. Uh, arpeggio right yeah um the, the just that ringing guitar that chiming guitar um very very memorable um and you know really excellent tom york performance mm -hmm. on the vocals on the vocal yeah. side yeah i mean great track it it deserves a lot more love than it gets um cool yeah, yeah. but i mean it is uh it is right before street spirit yeah so um the next track which uh that kind of overshadows it yeah well as it, again radiohead fantastic at closing a record mm -hmm. um so street spirit uh yeah like to, what what is uh what do you think is great about street spirit because obviously it is great it's i mean well yeah it's 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 uh so i don't know that opening riff it's just very unsettling um, but it works, um, you know, as the closer, because I feel like the song has been much more, you know, it's, it has, it has, it has its, uh, unsettling moments. Like, you know, my iron lung is pretty, a pretty weird track. 
Um, and I just think this song is uh, a great way to close off, you know, the album. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that that opening guitar riff is uh, incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it is, and it's uh, you know, it's played that whole progression, that style, that that arpeggio all throughout, right? That that style of playing all throughout. Um, and it really carries the track and it, and it, and it gives the track like a sense of destination. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just has such a, it, it's not quite ominous, but it's kind of like, it, it's unsettling, but it's beautiful and mournful at the same time. Um, it, I mean, what, how can you express what an incredible track this is? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of the best closing, closing tracks ever yeah. on any record. Yeah. It, it may be the best on in all honesty mm-hmm. um it's just such a i mean just right up to that very last you know just the last lyric right immerse your soul in love right yeah um it's one of those and, and my favorite thing about this track is that is is tom york talking about the process of writing it and just basically saying like um i i didn't really write that song i just kind of channeled it like it just came yeah. it came from outside it felt like it came from outside of me um it's a really it's it's a uh it feels like a song of destiny it just feels like a song that it's like man somebody had somebody had to write that song yeah somebody had to bring that song into the world mm-hmm. it was necessary yeah. um yeah so you know incredible incredible way to close what is uh truly an incredible album so yeah so Brannick, that's the 12 tracks of the bends mm-hmm. what's your current assessment of the bends so i mean i mentioned earlier that this is uh this was my favorite album um ever uh for a long time Mm -hmm. um you know a couple years ago and so since it was i listened to it all the time and uh you know i haven't really listened to it that much recently i mean i still come back to it sometimes but um i don't really listen to it too much just because of how much i listened to before Mm -hmm. and i mean it's still an amazing album and it deserves so much love but um i don't you know yeah I, i just don't listen to it too much anymore um so yeah yeah well one you know it's one of those records once you listen to it a lot you know there's um you know let me let me get a little um generational on you and just say like it's something you growing up being able to listen to literally any record you want to right now Mm -hmm. right that is not something that that i had when i was growing up listening to radiohead right so like I had a limited collection of music that I could listen to. And I, I had a lot, but, but it was, you know, I, if I wanted to listen to something new, I had to go buy that record. So I would go back to the same records a lot. And even if I didn't listen to, you know, the bands for a couple of years, I'd come back to it and then listen to it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, now being able to listen to just anything on one touch of a button, it's hard, you know, you, you're always interested in like the new shiny object, but, um, but, you know, this is one of those records that you do come back to. This is a, this is a vinyl copy record, right? That you yeah, want to have a vinyl yeah. copy mm. of and listen to it because it's just, it's worthy of, of your attention every once in a while. Yeah. And right? I mean, yeah, it's a spectacular album and um, I just, I just don't listen to it as much as I used to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, give it time. You'll come back. You'll come yeah. back to it. You'll yeah, I will. It. I will. Um, so what's your favorite song on, <clears throat> excuse me what's your favorite song on the bins uh you know it's really hard to choose just one i mean uh just is spectacular gotta um, choose one i gotta choose only one okay well in that case i think i'll actually go with black star um mm. i think it's uh you know it's one that i kind of slept on for a while and um but you know it's it's been my it's been one of my favorites uh recently um so i mean it's it's a great song so very cool yeah. very cool uh ready for mine yep go ahead my favorite track on the bends is the bends the bends yeah yeah and i think uh, the bends would probably it, it definitely would have been um but since i've just listened to it you know uh so much uh i think i'd rather go back to black star mm-hmm. um or maybe just instead yeah. Um, well, for me, the bends, like, I just, I, I, I've really found that I enjoy just playing it, um, mm-hmm. and singing it. Like, it's just a fun, it's a fun, it's a cool song. It's a cool song, yeah. but it's just a fun song too. Like, it's yeah. like, it's fun to sing. It's fun to like, just like go along with the lyrics, like all the different kind of parts where, you know, the, like 
you know, I wish it was the sixties. I wish we could be, you know, you're like yeah. all the instruments drop out except for just the drums. Right. Mm -hmm. Like just, it's just such an amazingly yeah. fun song. Yeah. It is. Um, and there's something about Radiohead. <laughs> Excuse me. Got a little something in my throat. There's something about Radiohead that happened to them along the way where they maybe were less interested in being a fun band. And, um, and that was the last great moment there. So, <clears throat> yeah. 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 So, uh, got a little something in my throat y'all. So we're going to wrap this one up. Um, what do you think of the bends and what's your favorite mm -hmm. track? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. And, uh, say a prayer for me that I don't die because something happened in my throat. All right. I'm not going <laughs> to die. I'm good. Um, Hey, like subscribe, comment. Um, thank you for watching this episode. Um, and we will talk at you next time about. Okay. Computer. That's right. That's right. All right. See you later, everybody. See ya.